welcome back to the Agent Goldmine. Here's what to expect to learn in today's show. We are bringing you the inside scoop on what it's really like to be a Tom Ferry coach, which is the number one real estate agent coaching program worldwide. And we're getting this information from none other than Ali's own Tom Ferry coach. So we're going to dig into how to qualify to become a coach, the screening process for which coaching clients to work with, what the back end of the Tom Ferry ecosystem looks like, then a little bit of social media content, a little bit on agent attraction. And if you stick around to the end, he is going to share the most common thread across all of his coaching clients that is consistently holding agents back. Hell yeah. This is Renee Botello that we have on the podcast. He's been an agent for 11 years. He owns his own brokerage. It's called Home Guide Real Estate out in El Paso, Texas. He has about 25 agents, I think, on his team right now, and he's only going to continue to grow. He has a wife, he has four kids, and he has the biggest Minis- the biggest love for the Minnesota Vikings, especially being in Texas that I know of. I told him that I'm moving to, to Minnesota. He's, dude, I'm make sure that you have an extra room for me because I am coming over <laughs> to watch some of the Vikings games. So bring on Renee Batello. You can find him on Instagram also, real estate Renee with underscores in between there. So real underscore estate underscore Renee. And you can also find us, Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show. So if you have any questions about this episode or any other episode or suggestions of who we should bring on, hit us up. We're here for it. We respond to all of the DMs that we get. Enjoy the show. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Coach Renee, you are a Tom Ferry coach. How'd you become one? What does that start? So you have to get recommended. So just real quick, guys, Renee Botello, Tom Ferry coach, also owner of a brokerage, uh, four kids, El Paso's number one Viking fan. I have to say that because actually we just got a uh, true El Paso and they just joined our team. So hopefully shout out Aaron Jones one day. You hear this, bro? You and I need to connect. We're El Paso wins. Now you're a Viking. So awesome. Anyways, um, jumping in, ladies. First of all, thanks for having me. Second, Tom Ferry coach. You have to be extremely handsome to be able to be a Tom Ferry coach. That's pretty mm. much the whole qualification. Obviously, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so you, you, you do have to get referred by another coach or somebody that's in our ecosystem that's either management or coaching. So you do have to get a, a recommendation referral somehow. So that's that's how it started for me. And my, my coach, back before I was coach, recommended and referred me to be a coach with Tom Ferry. Okay. So there's a, there's a recommendation process. Is there any more further screening? Do you have to have experience as an agent or a team leader or production requirements, or is there an interview or they just like, you know, Renee's coach said he was good. So he's good. What does that look like? No, they, they do do their due diligence. They don't just let anybody on because even if you get recommended, it doesn't mean you're going to go through even after about a three, four step process, you're not guaranteed to be a coach either. So I'll walk you through kind of like the the meat and potatoes of it, right? Um, so after you're recommended, they do an initial interview with you. And what they're looking for is to see if one, you fit the culture and two, you have enough experience to be a coach because they don't want somebody to just walk in and represent the biggest coaching company probably in the world without any recommend, without any experience and also the culture that Tom Ferry has created in this ecosystem, right? So they do, they do a pretty good vetting process before you're even allowed to talk to any coaching clients or accept any. What, what is the culture and experience requirements? Like what is, the, we'll start with culture. What is Tom Perry's culture? One, you have to be coachable even as a coach. You have to be able to be able to take constructive criticism or feedback from other senior coaches or the people that are helping you through training, right? So that's one. A big part that I would say also is that your mentality. You have to be able to be aware of your mental state at all times because as you coach other agents real estate is one of the highest stress induced industry period period i'm I'm sure you all know this right so you have to be able to check your mental state and your mental state needs you you need to you need to have a really good emotional iq is is a big part of what they do when they onboard you and by that is Hey, do you recognize when you're getting frustrated? Hey, can you recognize when you're getting upset? Hey, can you recognize when you're not feeling, when you're feeling down? 
Hey, can you recognize when you're having an off day? Hey, can you recognize when your energy is low? All those things, you need to have that IQ to be able to check yourself and make sure that you're in the right mental state to be able to coach people. Dude, totally makes sense. Okay, that's like kind of the emotional, cultural piece of it. And then what are the requirements for the experience piece? So they want you to be as far as, as far as some of the experience, they need you to be in the ecosystem. I believe it's for at least four years. I think it's two or four years to be in the Tom Ferry ecosystem, right? So that's, you're actually being coached by a coach and you're actually experiencing the culture for yourself because I don't know if Shelby, do you coach with Tom Ferry or is it just Ellie? No, I don't, which is why I'm like so curious. All these okay. questions are like, really? I want to know, Renee. <laughs> okay. I, no, I, I got you. I got you. So <laughs> I, I'm sure um, Ellie can attest to this, but the ecosystem we have, the culture is very inviting, very informative, very giving, and very generous. And, and, and if you talk to five people in an event, I'm, I'm going to assume four out of the five are going to want to provide some sort of value to you if they can. So if you ask questions like, hey, Aldi, I saw you're killing you with bringing agents onto your team with EXP. Can you tell me a little bit more about like your secrets or your tips or what do you do at a high level? Ali is most likely, which I know Ali will because I know Ali, right? Ali's most likely going to say, dude, sure. Like we're all about giving here. So it's a very giving culture and very rich in education. So if I could nail it down, that's what I would say the top two things are for the culture. Sharing is caring. Love it. And then you said for the experience level, you have to be a part of the ecosystem. So you have to be a client, a coaching client, receiving coaching for, right. we said four years, somewhere around the four year mark. I, 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 I want to say it's two or four years. Okay. I can't remember. My memory is not the best, but I, I want to say it's two or four years. We will not quote you on any of this. This is, okay, listeners, good. this Thank is all you. rough, rough sketches. Okay. <laughs> And then, so was there any additional experience besides like being an actual coach? Is there like a production requirement? Must close X amount of transactions, whatever. Um, it goes tiered based off what you think you're going to be good at coaching because annually, not even just when we started, they ask you, hey, where do you feel efficient? What areas of real estate do you feel efficient? Is it recruiting? Is it with teams? Is it solo agents? Is it open house? Is it cold calling? Is it door knocking? Is it managing an office? So they ask you where you feel efficient. So your background, your experience has to go along or, or coincide with what you want to coach to based off what you told them on the interview. So what they're going to do is they're going to check your stats. They're going to say, okay, you said that you're really good at recruiting agents. Can you show us a track record? And then when you're interviewing them, they're going to say, hey, so what, do you, what, what is your system for recruiting? What do, what do your conversations sound like? How many people have you recruited? So they, they do go with extensive background of your experience, and they want to show some sort of proof that you have that experience. Because again, we don't want just anybody coaching the ecosystem that they haven't experienced stuff that they're coaching on, right? Because you can only get so far teaching a subject you've never done. And it's it, it becomes obvious too. Like when people, because people do that on the inter, on the interwebs all the time, you know, like something that they've done one time and, oh, I'm so successful. Let me start a course on this. Let me coach others. For I sure. am now a mentor. And it's, it's, I think it's, it's very obvious with being that not all coaches, I mean, every, every person is different. Every background is different. Every person likes focusing on something specifically. How do, what's, what is, I mean, I know what it's like, but explain for others what it's like to get paired with a client. Like, how do you pick a client? How does a client, a coaching client pick you? What is that process like? So the coaching clients normally, normally I would say about 95% usually just get put into a roster of one of the coaches based off what the coach knows they can teach to be based off our assessments they give us with, with our chain of command, right? So like, again, like when you onboard as a coach, once they say, okay, you're good to go, we believe you, you're doing amazing, you've done role-playing and you've gone through our whole boot camp of being a coach, they're going to say, where do you feel good at coaching in? And then from based off that, let's say for her example, I'll use you as an example, Ali. Ali was very specific of what she was looking for in a coach when she came on board. And she, I believe you interviewed other ones besides me. We actually didn't, end up, we almost didn't end up working together, by the way. Yeah. Right? And we'll, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But what they do is our onboarding team does a really good job placement. They do a really good job of saying, okay, Ali, you fill out this assessment. You're going to fill out this disc assessment. You're also going to fill out what you're looking for to coach, right? Your top three things. And then what you're looking forward to in the first six, 12 months. And then based off that, they look at the coaches that they have on staff and they say, okay, who aligns with what this client's looking for. If Ali had came to me and said, hey, I want to be a top commercial agent in my city, I would have been like, you're in the wrong roster, right? Because we're about building long-term relationships with our coaching clients and we want you to stay as long as possible. 
So we don't want to align you with a coach that doesn't train on that or doesn't know about it. So our placement team does a really good job of examining what Ali's wants and needs are based off what the coach feels good at coaching in, and then they pair us together. Do you want to go into the story of how we almost didn't end up working together? Yes. I would like yes, to I know. Do. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let Ali speak on this. Okay. okay. I like, I haven't thought about this in a while. Uh, so thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Ali the Agent and The Shelby Show. I haven't thought about this in a while. So you and I, from my side, please correct me where, where I'm wrong. You and I were connected first because so yep. when I first wanted, I was like, I want somebody to help me with YouTube to help me grow the community. And like those two things, like I'm not in the business or I don't want to be in the business. <laughs> I was like, I'm not here to door knock. I'm not here to, you know, just, I wanted Hold to call. grow the community yeah. via, yeah, via YouTube. And so that, that was it. And then I think you and I were paired together first. And I think we had a, a phone call, you know, like we texted back up you texted me immediately. You were at, at a meeting. I think you're like at a coaching call or four coaches. And then you're like, so then we, we had a phone call. And I was still interviewing around because I wanted to see who has like the YouTube experience, who has the background of growing the community. And the other person that I spoke to did not have the background that you did in uh, growing a team. And you were a prior EXP. So I was like, you get it. You know, you're, like, you're not one of those that are like, oh my God, EXP is a cult or, you know, like whatever it is, like right. you, you get it. Yeah. So when a, I think originally when I, when I thought that I wanted to work with the other coach, you're Oh my gosh, now I'm confused. Oh, now I'm getting confused. I'm pretty sure you were like, totally I, fine. Like I'm here. Like it, you left it on such good terms that I felt comfortable coming back to you with my tail between my legs being like, Renee, can we work together? <laughs> I know. Okay, so, so from what I remember, right. And you can correct me if I, it's not the right memory or what, but from what I remember, we got, we got connected and they said, Hey guys, here, meet your new coach. Hey, Renee, meet your new client, Ellie. And so we get connected. So we do a welcome email and text message. So I reached out and then Allie asked a lot of really good questions. And one of her questions was, hey, I really want to be paired with a coach that's the expert at YouTube. That's one of my big ones. And I was like, let me be 100% transparent, Allie. Like I can give you the basics of YouTube and how to start a channel and like thumbnails and all the basic stuff, right? I said, but I'm not the expert at YouTube. So I don't want you to be aligned with somebody that may not be a fit for what you're looking for specifically. And then part of what you also said was that you wanted to bring on more people to your team, your downline, right? You want to bring agent attraction. And I said, however, Ali, if you want somebody that's strong in agent attraction, building a team, retention, recruiting, I said, in the past six years, I've recruited over 160 agents in my career, right? Whether it's to my brokerage, whether it was to another company to operate or EXP. I said, so if you're looking for that, I got you hundred percent. I can definitely help you with that area. And so, yeah, Ali went in and interviewed a couple other people. And then Ali gracefully came back and said, hey, I think I need you as a coach. Grace and, then Ali, and then I, I went like this. She, she didn't see it, but I went like this. Let's get to work, girl. That's what I, I did. That. No, but, so Dude, the, so the, but, but, but what, even Ali, I, I think I mentioned this before, but even what I do, my coaching style, even if I'm getting placed with clients, my first initial onboarding call, I still treat it like an interview because placement does a really good job, but sometimes you can miss it because we're our human. We all make mistakes here and there. So all of my onboarding, I, I ask questions and I say, Hey, I know your assessment says this, but I want to hear from you. And I want to determine by the end of our onboarding call, if we're going to be a good fit or if you need to interview other coaches, because we don't want to waste anybody's time or money. We don't onboarding. So your, you know, placement team does a great job. You are placed with the client that can learn from your skill set and you have right. this onboarding call that you treat like an inter interview. When you say right. onboarding, is this like a familiarity type of get to know you, really like hone in or is it onboarding? Here's our systems, here's how you use them. Like uh, So we we have a what's called a fit call before you meet with your coach. Ideally that's usually what happens. A fit call. Yeah, it's going to be um, hard, dude, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm on day 22. Day 22. Dude. Or day 20, I'm on day 23. Day 23. That's fucking badass. 75 hard is, is hard. It earns its name. <laughs> dude, I'm not going to lie. On day 18, 19, and even some of 20, 
I was so drained, but anybody, we're going to sidebar here. I know we are. Watch. Yeah. Anybody that's going to do it, if you are doing it, you're going to hit something during your third week where you're probably not getting your enough electrolytes or vitamins, which I wasn't. And so I had to buy electrolytes and vitamins because drinking a gallon of water, it, it actually yeah. flushes a lot of stuff out. Yeah. So if you're not doing that, your energy is going to dip no matter how much caffeine you drink. So now I'm back on electrolytes and vitamins and magnesium and all this stuff. So I feel good. But anyways, the fit call, what they do is they go, all right, here's how to use a loom. That's our system. And a loom is extremely powerful. It's almost like when you go on board to, to EXP and there's a million resources, they show you, hey, here's how to find these things. And here's what you can do with this. That way you can start getting more um, familiar with the a loom uh, setting and system. When I do onboarding calls, I go over their assessment and then I, I allow Q and A. Hey, here's my background. Here's what I've done. Here's my experience. And then I say, tell me more about you, what you're looking for. Tell me what kind of accountability you want from a coach. Tell me X, Y, Z, your assessment says this. Tell me what that means to you. Because on that first call, I say, hey, look, and I told this to Ellie, I'm not a drill sergeant coach. I'm not your babysitter, right? I'm your partner in this, right? So my goal is to make you successful if I can. But we need to determine that in this call. And if and if one day down the line, I'm not providing value to you, you should go and interview other coaches because at the end of the day, we want you to succeed, regardless if that's with me or somebody else. Okay, so get, you're getting an overview of what's available to you. You're doing the needs assessment, Q&A type of thing. And by the end of that first onboarding call, you guys are set to do your, is it, I think Ali is once, is it once a week? for 30 minutes? I don't know. I'm asking you guys. Yeah. So what does that cadence look like moving forward? Like what is the actual coaching cadence look like? Yeah. I try to meet where the clients sit halfway. And what I do is once we do a business plan, I try to track and measure that quarterly with the clients. But because I try to coach based off what they're looking for, not what I want them to do. Does that make sense? That's what, and the cadence yeah, is really, smart. We, yeah. elite clients, we meet four times a month, 30 minutes Zoom calls. Okay. Um, and we pick the same day and same time every week. It could be rescheduled, but we have some policies about that. Um, but that's the cadence is we try to coach better to what your needs are because I have a 20 year old coaching client that loves cold calling. And that's all I coach him on how to be better at cold calling and how to follow up on that, on that business. This guy, you made a Mali case. This guy closed 23 expired listings last year. And that was his first full year in the industry. So we coach Baylor taste, we coach tailored based off what you're looking for in that season of real estate you're in at that current moment. That's how we try to treat our clients because we don't want to be very directive. Most of the time, we want to be more curious of how we can help. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. And it took me a long time to learn that one where it's like you want to coach people in what they want to do as opposed to what you think they should do. Because I went through this mm -hmm. whole period after like, I learned so many hard, hard lessons through blood, sweat, and tears. And so people would come to me and they'd be like, I want to do this. And I had, you know, years experience of doing that exact same thing. And so I had opinions. <laughs> I had experiences that I just wanted to be like, hey, I learned all of these things and you might not freaking want to do that. But what I've come to now, and I actually talk about it now, I'm like meeting people where they're at, because as much as you can tell someone like, hey, this was my experience and it didn't you know, maybe it worked out, maybe it didn't work out X, Y, and Z. They, if they've already made the decision that they want to do something, you coming in and trying to dissuade them from that. First of all, it's not going to work. Second of all, they're probably going to be like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Now I'm just not going to tell you about it. So yeah. it's, it's one of those things that I love that you said that. And I think that that's a really important quality in a coach. Yeah. And I, I don't let Ali speak on this too, but we try to be more curious and coach based off what you're looking for, but there is moments when we need to be directive and we need to challenge our clients, right? So if you're hitting a plateau somewhere, that's where I'm going to jump in and challenge and say, look, I know you don't want to do X, Y, Z, but at this point we've exhausted our efforts over here. I need to challenge you to do this, even if you're uncomfortable. So uncomfortability is not something that we coach away from. We're going to say, no, no, no. If you want to hit this goal, you need to do this. If you don't, that's okay. We'll just coast to where we're at if that's what you want. No, we don't want to coast. But okay, Renee, you mentioned you mentioned a business plan. So we've done the onboarding call. And at this point, do you like give your clients homework to fill out a business plan, like a template type of thing and come back? Or is that like your first call? You're working through that together. What does the business plan look like? 
So our business plan is actually in the Loom software that we use, our back office that the clients have access to. And it's digitally walks you through your actual business plan from it goes to your mindset all the way to units and goals, marketing plan. Uh, you can go into a financial plan. So it's, it's, it's in your Loom profile that I give my clients. So usually what I do is I, I'll jump on a call when we do our business plan and I'll say, let's start filling it out together. And then if you get stuck after our call and you're still going, let me know so I can help you. But I try not to make too many calls the business plan because I want to get work done versus just talking about it. Okay, gotcha. So let's, can we talk about what the call actually looks like then? So like you guys hop on a call, is there like a structure that you, is there homework required? I also am curious about, you mentioned accountability and you're not a drill sergeant type of thing, but like how does accountability and structure tie into that monthly 30 minute once a week call? So what I usually start off with is just a quick little catch up. Like I'll jump on with Ali and I'll say, all right, Ali, how are you? We'll chit chat for a couple minutes, right? And we'll just play a little bit of catch up and I'll say, okay, if we had homework for the last week, which I usually try to have an assignment for somebody, every client that I have, I usually have an assignment. And I say, okay, based off what we talked about last week, we talked about this, where are we at with that? And we finished that. No, okay, well, what happened? Why did we finish that? Or we had this issue, okay, what happened there? And then from there, it's okay, where do you need me today? If I, if I, but if they don't have a direction, right? If they don't fill out their pre-call form, which I have, Ali knows about that. I'll, I'll be very direct at that point and say, okay, um, from your business plan, you want to do all these things. Where are we at? How do we implement this? What's our deadline? So we do have a structure where it's like catch up wins. You want your assignment. What are we focusing on today? How do we move the needle just slightly every time we jump on a call 30 minutes? But again, it's very, very, it's very much tailored to the client. Like Ali and I, we don't jump on and go over spreadsheets and graphs and data and tracking. We, we talk about tracking. But really what me and Ali go over is content creation, ideas for videos. Okay, how do I talk to this agent? Hey, this agent's resisting some information. How do I do this? So a lot of what me and Ali do is content, how we can get more agents. How do we put that in a simpler format? And Ali, I'll let you talk more to this, but what's your experience with our calls? What do you feel like the format looks like for us? Originally, I thought that 30 minutes, I was like, there's no way 30 minutes is going to be enough time. I was like, there's no way. You know, like I want to talk forever. I want to talk like deep, so deep. But then we, by the time we get through it, maybe it's because I talk fast and because you are at my speed. Like we just, we just cover each section and then like we somehow end up covering all of it (laughs) somehow. I still don't know how, because I'm like 30 minutes is, it ain't shit, but it is. (laughs) I don't know if that, that answered it. Yeah. Because but, but, but we usually, you and I, we come to our call prepared for what we need to talk about. And and then I say you and I, because you fill out your pre-call sheet. And I know what you're already going to ask. And so I try to compare, come prepared with information and also some value points for you. But you always jump on calls and you're like, all right, coach, here's where I need you today. Here's where I'm having an issue. Because we don't want to spend the whole call talking about how wonderful business is because that's not moving the needle. We want to talk about the hard shit. Is there a coaching client? Do you guys take complete noobs? Or Mm -hmm. do you take, okay, so like literally any level. And then as a part of the onboarding process, part of that is like the assess where you're at type of thing. Yep. Okay, gotcha. Why would a coach want to coach with Tom Ferry when they could coach on their own? It's, well, for me, one, I'm a fangirl of Tom Ferry. He has helped my career and my life so much, even through proximity from a distance for the most part. But me and also Tom have a relationship where I can reach out to him whenever. So one, I love Tom. So for me, that's more of a preference because I, everything that he talks about is his webinars, his podcasts, all the events. I'm like, dude, I get you. Like you're my spirit animal in real estate. I get it. So he's hands down my, my favorite person in real estate, right? Favorite by, by, by a long stretch. <clears throat> Number two, they already have this system established, especially for somebody like me. I'm speaking personally. I have a brokerage. I have 35 agents in my brokerage. I'm going to get to 60 this year. I have four kids. I coach 25 agents throughout the nation. I don't want to manage more systems. I don't want to manage more tools. I don't want to manage more things. I don't have time to manage it. And if I did, I'd be miserable and I would suck as a coach. So they already have an established system and they also have an established lead generator to bring on clients versus doing it by yourself. I've I've got got approached by different coaching companies that are miles behind what Tom Ferry's system does in in their company. And I'm just like, one, I would never leave Tom unless Tom told me to go F myself. That's the only way I leave Tom. That's the only way I would leave his coaching program. If Tom ever said that, which I don't think he ever would, unless 
he, he's bipolar and we didn't know that. I don't know, but I, I would have leave Tom. But yeah, I mean, you can do coaching on your own, but it's it's really a whole company you have to operate and really invest a lot of time into, which that's not what I'm looking to do. You have a whole brokerage that you're running with a lot of and with a lot of the you know agents, I presume, needing your assistance because you're their leader, right? So how do you juggle being a Tom Ferry coach with also growing and expanding and recruiting for your your crew and taking care of compliance, like all the things? I feel like that's it. it I feel like being a Tom Ferry coach full time would be like enough <laughs> a lot you know how do you balance both there's a couple of different things but i'll start off by saying it takes a team and so i have a really really great office manager i also have a business partner in my company and he is amazing to work with and he's a he's a lot of help so that's a big part is the team that i have in the company is in a, a great support system that i can lean on we also know our roles and we stay in our lane and so we all know what we're supposed to be doing for the company also delegation. You, If you want to be operating at a high level with the team, people in your downline, you want to have your own production, you want to have side projects, you want to have investments, you better learn how to delegate and also be able to time block efficiently, right? So I, I have to put things into categories of time and I have to be disciplined enough to follow that or else everything gets thrown off track. How many, how many coaching clients do you have? Right now, 25. Damn. Okay, so when you say time I, block, you, are so, you time... <laughs> A day is just Tom Ferry coaching like students or so, how do you divide that? So that's a good question. I, I actually do Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday where I do, I allow coaching from my time, 10 a.m. to about 3.30. And I have breaks in between where I can off, where I can handle some of the office stuff or respond to emails or take a quick lunch. But my Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, I'm performing at a high level where I'm knocking a lot of coaching calls. I'm taking care of stuff at the office. Um, I might have some recruiting interviews during the time, but I also respect my time a lot. Ali, you're, you know this, but my phone's on do not disturb all the time because I'm trying to eliminate as many distractions as possible. And this guy is the biggest distraction we all have. And if we don't, if we don't discipline ourselves to be able to put this down and not be so distracted, it's going to be really hard to get shit done. Even if you're just working one career, it's going to be really hard to get shit done. So fucking true. <laughs> How does pay work? Because I know like I so I think the elite, which is the what you know, that's isn't it is thirteen hundred dollars a month. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Just about thirty. And, yep. and how much does it how much gets to the coach? Yes, yeah, so I, don't, I don't know if we're allowed to disclose like the actual percentage, but we get percentage of, of that money. Uh, and and the compensation is not bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like if I if I was just doing coaching alone, I had no company, I would pick up more clients. Mm -hmm. Just so I can get more income coming in, but I'd also probably lose my mind because when you're coaching people, you're taking on all their problems and all right. of their, you're taking all their wins, you're taking all their losses, you're taking all the energy. And yep. so for me, I, I got to 35 clients at one point and I reduced my roster down because I couldn't manage that time. But also it's a lot of stuff that you have to deal with mentally, but just jumping into the pay structure, we get a good percentage for what we do in our 30 minute sessions. So we, we get a percentage of that of that money. Okay, cool. And that makes sense. I mean, obviously it wouldn't be the whole thing because it's kind of like, even if you think about like team structure, because I ran a traditional team for years. And so it's, you know, although you are the one who's doing the appointments and you are the client facing, there's so many systems and backend and processing. And the fact that you can just choose from pre-screened clients, you know, that, I mean, that alone is so much work in the marketing that they're doing in order to yep. bring those clients in the first place, there's so much more than goes into it than just, oh my God, you have to split with Tom Ferry. No, I mean, I'm lucky to split with Tom Ferry. A hundred percent. And, and I've had other coaching companies, coaches approach me and say, hey, bro, I know I'll pay you more because I have insider on what you guys get paid over there and I know I'll pay you more. And I'm like, that's cool, man. But really for coaching for me is not my bread and butter of income. It's a bonus for me because I enjoy this system and Tom Ferry's ecosystem, and I enjoy coaching where it's not for the income for me. It truly isn't. Don't get me wrong. It's not bad, but I enjoy it. The the coaching aspect of being with Tom Ferry. So, okay. On, on top of you being a Tom Ferry student turned coach, you own your own brokerage. You're also, you know, handling your coach for all the agents of your team. You're recruiting, you're handling everything. How... 
uh, I want to start with recruiting. How are you, what are you doing to recruit for your own brokerage now? Yo, real quick, this podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who'd benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. A big part of where I recruit now at this point, because my, my market, like not to toot my own horn, sounds super arrogant. I'm pretty established in my market. And then we're in a little big city kind of mentality where everybody kind of knows everybody. And so my name is pretty well known in the El Paso area. And, and again, I'm not trying to say I'm the top performer, like that, that, not saying that at all. I'm not trying to sound big headed, but I'm pretty well known. So a lot of my recruiting and my efforts goes through social media. I, if I like what you're doing on social media, that's a big part of how I like coaching too. And if you're active on social media, I'm going to really reach out to you and eventually get you in my door to sit down for an interview. That's one of my big ones is social media. Another big one is networking. And that's sometimes I'll go to like realtor tours or real estate events. And that's kind of where I mean, go and talk to agents. But I would say without a shadow of a doubt, my big one is social media. That's where I recruit. That's where we recruit here locally. Because again, I'm recruiting locally for my company. Okay. When you, when you bring agents to your, cause you have a whole studio. When you say you interview them, what does, what does that look like? Like you're hitting me up. I'm also in El Paso. I'm killing it in the business yep. and you want me on your team. You see that I'm, I'm active on social media. What's the first message that you send me? Well, one, the first message I'm going to send you is even before I even send you a message, I'm going to do my homework on you a little bit. I'm going to look at your production and see where you're at. Because if your production is low and I see you're killing on social media, there's a gap somewhere whether it's converting or follow-ups or your only, your only lead generator is social media, I'm looking to see what that looks like so I can build a conversation off that, right? So before I even reach out to you, I'm trying to identify who you are as an agent and as a person. So if I'm reaching out to you, Ali, that you're killing it, I'm going to say, okay, what value can we add here in Home Guide for Ellie? And if I can answer that question, I'm reaching out to you. Or if I think I can answer that question, I'm reaching out to you. So like for me, I would say, hey, Ali, I see you're doing a lot of stuff on social media. I think it's pretty awesome. Hey, I'd love to sit down with you and kind of pick your brain a little bit about what you do. And I'd love to provide some value if I can to see if I can help you excel in the area that you're really good at. Oh, okay. So the first conversation, the first couple of messages aren't even about me being interviewed on, right? It's just like you. Because I, I want to deliver value, which you do, Ali, really well, right? As Shelby, I'm sure you do too. I don't know you well enough to say that yet, but... I know that what we talk about in our coaching session, Dali, is how can you deliver value to get them interested and talk about what you're doing in your company? Because people don't give a shit what you're doing unless you brought on value or they know you care. Or they think you're really fucking cool on the internet. <laughs> or that. Or they, or they think you're really fucking cool on the internet, it's right? Tom Ferry is, you're never going to leave him because you are bought in, you listen, he gets you. That's, yeah. No, it's very interesting. But I totally agree. 100% agree with you. Nice. I've actually been to, when Tom Ferry lived in Cali, I was actually in his house, in his wine cellar, talking biz with Tom one time. Dude. Super awesome. Yeah. That is fucking sick. Yeah. By the way, yes. this is this is the culture of the ecosystem. I had text Tom after a lead retreat, and I just did the whole thing to him. I didn't, get to, I didn't get to have a conversation with him because every time he'd finish talking, 10,000 people would bombard him. And I just didn't want to stand in the back and be like, Tom, Tom, wait for me. So I text him after I said, hey, Tom, this leader, she was amazing. Thank you so much for always being a leader, blah, blah, blah. Like just, just catching up a little bit. And then I said, hey, by the way, when you see me in Dallas in August, I will be 50 pounds lighter because I've started this journey at 75 hard. And you as my head coach, I want you to hold me accountable. So when you see me, if I look the same, you need to yell at me or punch me in the throat, Tom. And then Tom was like, hey, bro, you're amazing. Thing. That's awesome that you're doing that. I have another one of my longtime coaching clients that just started. You guys need to put together a group in our ecosystem to get others involved in 75 hard. So there's actually 90 members in this Facebook group of Tom Ferry clients that are doing 75 hard right now. That's the ecosystem, dude. Everybody, Everybody's aligning in little clicks that make sense for them. On top of your, your recruiting, your Tom Ferry coaching, what else would you say is your secret sauce? Like what else would you say is like that you're damn good at? I think content. Hopefully, Ali, you can attest to this and you can back me up. But I think content, I, I, I'm i very much so on the side of creative content and humor, but also more than anything, how do I deliver a message without sounding like everybody else in the industry, right? If I'm going to talk about interest rates, well, who am I talking to? One, am I talking to a buyer or seller? Then I'm going to point that out on my content, in my video. But two, how do I say the same thing everybody's saying, but it reaches them on a different level? 
right? So if I'm talking about interest rates in the market right now, this is just the easiest one to talk about right now, is I'm going to say, you and the, let's say me and Shelby are having a conversation or I'm trying to reach Shelby. I'm going to say, hey, look, Shelby, I understand that rates are kind of high, but what we need to talk about right now is payment affordability. So I use my words to connect with you on a different level versus just saying, rates are high, marry the rate. I mean, marry, marry the home and date the rate. I don't say any of that crap. It's cool. I get, I get what people are saying it, but I want to reach you on a different level and help you understand the psychology of why I'm putting this message out. So besides like recruiting, I would say my other superpower is being able to have creative content that hits something with you that brings value so that you're listening to the content, not just skipping through it. Definitely. No, I mean, we're in the attention economy where if you don't stand out, like if you are saying the same shit in the same tone that everyone else is, you are not different. Why should they join your brokerage? Why should they be, you know, a client of yours to help them buy or sell? So one of your by the way, in case we haven't already mentioned this in the beginning with the edits, your Instagram is real estate Renee, R E N E. And one of your most recent posts was like, you straight up wearing a wig. Talk about eye catching. You're tr- pretending to be a girl, you know, like it's, it's funny, it's humor. And then there's real estate. It's almost from my, from my take, real estate is almost like a, an undertone. You like, you go with like humor first and, and real estate is just, like, Oh, Oh, he ended up talking about real estate. Like I didn't even notice until afterward. And so I, I feel like that's, I, I like that because you come with the, the, the educate, not the education, the entertainment first, which is hard. Right. Well, because you, you know this Sally more than most, right? You know, that you have three seconds to capture their attention. If they're going to continue watching your video or not, you're not going to get your information you want to put out in three seconds. So how are you going to, how are you going to grasp them to watch your video? That video I think you're referring to is it's actually, that's my alter personality. It's Renicia. That's what we call her. Renicia. <laughs> and so Renicia <laughs> is your, Renicia is your caring client, but also your caring agent. So it's the agent and client that you're like, bro, get it together. Right? So on that video, I think you're referencing, it was referencing, I've had agents where they come to me, whether it's coaching clients or in my office where they're like, I'm just not getting any traction or results and I don't see any like closings. And I'm like, okay, well, we talked about time blocking your schedule. Are you following that? Because I haven't seen you in two months. You haven't came to sit down and do one-on-one coachings. You haven't came to any of our meetings. I haven't seen two months. What have you been doing? Oh, I was on vacation. And then it's like, how do you are you on vacation if you don't have money? Right. And then for two months you're on vacation? No, no, we took three trips. Why would you think you would have any results if you're always on vacation, right? So by, by that that video was pointing to agents that I'm not seeing results. And then in that video, I'm saying, well, stop going on vacation every month. If you're really trying to make this a career, like you need to put in the work. And that's what my message I was trying to deliver. Hopefully it came across, right? My message was like, if you're on vacation every single month, you're not going to get any results. And that's a, I mean, I feel like that's a pretty common thread. Like, I love that you brought that up because I, Ali and I both hear that where it's like, why am I not getting results? And it's, you're not doing the work. <laughs> so I was curious, actually, what are, is there any other threads that jump to mind that you see frequently in coaching clients, like commonalities across the clients of things that frequently hold them back that, I don't know, does that question make sense? What are some common, mm-hmm. common issues that hold people back? Okay, so the common things that hold people back is one, the big, here's one of the big ones, right? And I think I've already touched on it, but here's one of the big ones. And this is what I talk about a lot of with coaching clients and my agents, my office, or people I'm just talking to when they're asking for advice. Hey, what's made you really successful in real estate? Being consistent. Consistency starts with your daily routine. Your daily routine is not always going to be on point. Like you're not always going to say, okay, hour one, I did this. Hour two, all the way to when you clock out. It's not always going to be that because life happens, there's interruptions. But number one is you're inconsistent. That's the biggest one with real estate agents because here's the thing. As real estate agents, we have a lot of freedom and that's a gift and a curse. And for most people, it's a curse because what, what happens with most agents that you guys see, Hey, we're not getting any results. And we've done all, we've watched all the trainings and it's okay. Well, but after you watch the trainings, what did you do with that information? And it's, well, I went door knocking. Okay. But what, how many homes did you hit and how long did you door knock and how often are you door knocking? Well, I just did it one time and I hit five doors and nothing happened. Why would you think that that's? (laughs) <laughs> enough, right? So one's consistency or lack of consistency, which is not helping you. And then number two is how committed are you, right? You could, you could talk a big game and you could say, I want to do X, Y, Z, but if you're not committed for reals, like where you're like, you, you said it earlier, Shabby, you're reading my wall, right? When I have my different screen, 
the quote that says, if you want to take the island, you need to burn the boats. That's a commitment quote. How committed are you? Is it do or die for you? Or you have a spouse that supports you financially where it's, well, if I sell something, I sell something. If you're not committed, you're not going to make this a career and you're going to drop out, right? So it's commitment and it's going to be consistency. And then the big one is following a damn schedule and getting out of your house. If you're in your house, you're going to get super distracted. You're going to Netflix and chill. You're going to make yourself this elaborate breakfast or lunch and it's going to take two hours and you're going to find a chore to do. You're going to clean and then you did everything else but actual real estate producing activities. I love that that is the parent mentality. I think that that's the difference is if I were to leave my house, I would not get work done. I'd be like, I want a beer. I'm going to go take in some sun. I'm going to go, you know what? I'm just going to drive around. I'm going to play pickleball. But if I stay at my house, like there's nothing else for me to do except for work. Like I, so because there are no distractions. I mean, I have a dog now, which is like a distraction. That's, that's enough. But I feel like if I had kids, yeah, I would need to leave the house. So I think that's so, so interesting. I feel like that's like a parent versus not parent thing. Um, well, you're actually uh, a freak of nature, Ali, in a good way, because you're part of that 0.00001% that actually does not get distracted at home and gets work done. So you're the anomaly here because most people, even parent or not, you find something to get you distracted. There's always something to distract you. But what I would say about Ali also is that Ali uses her time very efficiently from what I know and what I can see and how I coach her. So she'll knock out items and then she's like, all right, cool. Now I'm going to go chill and have a beer and soak in the water. This is so true. We have, we've had, I am a freak of nature. Yes, that's right. And in a good way. Shelby, Shelby's the same way. Shelby's more intense. I, and she just high five me over the screen. I was like, oh, is her camera blurry? No, that was a high five. <laughs> okay. I forget what I was going to say. What, as we wrap up, because I didn't realize we're all, we're already close to time. What have we not covered before we go to our wrap up questions? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it. Back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. What have we not covered before we go to our wrap up questions? If I can, if I can add some value, going back to kind of the things I coach uh, at a high level at and kind of like what I really enjoy coaching at. If you're listening to this and you're looking to maybe attract agents or recruit or whatever, here's where you need to start. And Ali, I can send you this PowerPoint where it goes into the mindset of recruiting um, that you guys could use if you guys want to hand it out. But here's where you start. You really need to identify who you're for and what the value is for whatever company or team that you're part of or you're building. So you need to really identify who your avatar agent is for based off the value that you propose to the market you're in, right? So you really need to take the time to identify that because if you're just trying to go after everybody and you don't have an avatar, your culture is going to be bad and your retention is going to suck. Does that make sense? So it, start, it starts here with before even recruiting, it's who are you for and what's the value you can bring to the community? And that's how you know who to recruit and what kind of agent you're looking for. And they will usually stay long-term if you go based off those principles. That applies to everything too, like clients, agents, like mm -hmm. friends, literally everything. Like the more clear you are on who you want to be in the future, not even who you are now, like who you want to be in the future, get surrounded with them first. And then the rest really just falls into, into place, but you can't get, you can't be there. You can't pick and choose which clients you want to work with until you have consistently said no to the shitty ones. And by shitty, I mean shitty to you. It might not be shitty to somebody else. Just because it's shitty you right. doesn't mean like it's shitty to anyone. Some people love that type of client. They're just not yours. But yeah. until you start saying no and free up the 80% of the garbage clients that you're working with. Yeah, it's just like you. It's very similar to the to a book called The Pumpkin Patch. I think it's by Mike. The, pump, the Pumpkin Plan? Pumpkin. Some shit about pumpkins. <laughs> I always butcher there's this every pumpkin, time I bring this up. There's a pumpkin plan book. The pumpkin plants, Mike, Mike I think you're referring to that one. Or whatever. Yeah. I could, Where I barely it, remember the name, the, the title, because the name, I, nope. But there's, it's pretty there's much a book called like, The Pumpkin Plan. It might be that one. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much like the 80-20, the where you have to prune out the, the bad pumpkins in order to make the bigger pumpkins grow even more. Don't focus on the shitty little pumpkins that are getting, getting mold. You know, I don't know. Pump, mold grows on pumpkins, but you know what I mean? Prune out the badass clients and then you will get the good ass clients. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Coach, I want to know what is next for you? What's like a five-year 
or 10 year goal? Like, where do you see yourself headed? Yeah. So in business, in the next five years, I want to be able to franchise home guide real estate. That's one of my big five year plans is to be able to franchise our company to Texas first. And then from there, maybe go nationwide, but you know, at our own pace, we want to scale this company and this brand, which we're doing right now, five years from now, you may not like this answer, Ali, but I'm probably going to be reducing a lot of my coaching client roster and be more of a speaker with Tom Ferry at, at, at events. That's, that's, and I want to be a, I want to be a specialty, a specialty coach, which they have. And specialty coaches are specifically like, Hey, here's the two topics that I coached high, the high level at. And that's what I want to do in five years from now. Right. 12 months from now, personal wise, I will be down 12 months from now. Personal wise, I'll be at 200 pounds. I am at 285 right now. I've lost 10 pounds in 23 days. Personal wise, I'm putting it out there for the world. I will be 100 pounds down in 12 months. Yeah, I love. I heard it here first. Maybe not first, but that's <laughs> that's so cool, dude. We're gonna come back in a year from now, and we're all going to celebrate together. Okay, time yeah. for wrap up question number one. What is your favorite app or tool? My favorite app or tool, my Google Calendar on my phone. That keeps me in aligned with my schedule. I know it's not the fun, exciting or tool, but that one keeps me so I'm. I've had to create organization for myself because naturally I'm not the most organized person and that helps me stay organized in my days. What's your favorite book or podcast? And you can't say Tom Ferry. If it is going to be Tom Ferry, say something else. <laughs> uh, my favorite podcast is Andy Frisella, Real, Real AF. He's also the creator oh. of 75 Hard. He is that get in your face kind of, kind of personality that I need most of the time, like for my own personal stuff where I'm like, Oh, get your head out of your ass. Like that kind of guy. So if you guys haven't listened to Andy Frisella, real AF, like he's, he's, his podcast is up there. Like if you want to get shipped into a good mental state or a kick in the butt, like he'll definitely do it. Yeah. And then totally. as far as book wise, man, there's, there's a lot, but I, I think maybe the one, I would say this is my favorite because it's the one that got me on the path of personal development because growing up, I was really that student that, I was just like, oh, as long as I pass, I'm good. As long as I'm not failing and I can move to the next grade, I'm good. I didn't read my first book until maybe three years after I graduated high school, like formal schooling. And that book was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So that's my favorite book because it helped me get into the mental state of personal development. Classic. What events are you going to this year? Events? I will be at Success Summit with Tom Ferry later this year in August. What about trips, maybe? Sure. Uh, we have a family trip to Cancun in May. So that's my wife and my four kids, plus my mother-in-law. And then in September, I will be in Tokyo for the first time. That's awesome. I Oh, wow. How can we help you? We, Shelby and I, and the audience, how can we help you in your business? You know what? If you guys could help blast this to people that aren't doing coaching with Tom Ferry, I think that's where mm -hmm. I probably would see some help because they've challenged us to get some referrals for the organization. So if anybody is interested in coaching and you're not in my marketplace, right, in El Paso, and you're interested in coaching, at least have a consultation call with the Tom Ferry organization. If you guys need some help of where to call or who to call, who to email, um, I'm sure Ali can point you in the right direction. Or if you want to reach out to me personally on my Instagram, it's real underscore estate underscore Renee. That's with one E at the end because I'm a guy. So R-E-N-E. -E. If, if you guys want to explore that at all, because I do believe everybody needs a mentor, everybody needs a coach. And why not try the best real estate coaching company in the world and give that the opportunity first? Dude, hell yeah. And you know, our next question is usually where can people find you? But you already fucking nailed that, dude. You got <laughs> it. So. Yeah, that's, I'm active on that platform and social media just under Renee Botello. Other than that, I really don't do TikTok. I really don't do LinkedIn. Like I'm not, I'm not big on other profiles, platforms besides Instagram and Facebook. Perfect. So guys, you know, you heard it now. Go check out Renee, send him all the love, Tom Ferry, all the things. And while you're on the platform, after you have DM'd Renee, slide over to Allie and me and say, what's up? Because we want to hear from you too at Allie, the agent and the Shelby show. We would love your feedback. Always. We want to know what you like, what you don't like inside your psyches. Also, we have so much fucking tools. We have so many tools and checklists and products and all the things and we want to share them with you. So if there's anything specific in your business that you need help with, 
let us know. We are here to help. And otherwise, guys, that is all we have for today. You know the drill. Be a bro and share this show. Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.